Hi guys, it's Brittany from Ink and Papyrus. What am I doing here with paint? Well, let me tell you. I have been accumulating drawers of this paint over the years. Pick it up at thrift stores, get it on a sale. I say I will do something with it, and I never do. Why? Because it terrifies me. Because I'm not artistic and I can't paint, and that's the end of that. Well, I decided to bust open my paint drawers and figure out something to do with all this stuff. And I was not exactly disappointed with the results. I have started working on some Christmas ephemera, creating from nothing but just the raw materials that I have at home. And look, like, not terrible for somebody who seriously cannot paint um, and doesn't really have an artistic bone in their body, okay? so. I know you have some of this stuff that's accumulating in your drawer. It's time to pull it out. Let's create some Christmas ephemera. And now for the good news. All you need are some blank white pieces of paper, though I think painting on some book pages would look really cool too. A paint palette, some paint, some paint brushes, a canister of water, and a glass of wine, though I guess that's optional. Okay, so here I have a list of um, scenes that I think we can simply recreate um, without needing a whole lot of skill. If you're an exquisite painter, fantastic. I think most of us aren't, but these are things we can recreate with just a few brushes and really simple techniques. Um, Christmas tree with presents underneath, Christmas uh, cottages decorated, which is what I was really going for here, a skating rink, a North Pole scene, square, or trees of different colors, uh, Christmas row homes, um, ornaments, things like that. So let's start uh, doing some Christmas cottages. I think the thing that really makes the scene really special is um, the really small details that go into the cottages themselves, whether it be lights. Um, here I have uh, a mailbox, um, some bushes with uh, ornaments on them, uh, some candy canes hanging from um, this garland that's wrapped along the windows, this planter box. Um, so these are the, this Christmas tree in the window. So these are the small little details I think that really make this painting so cool. Okay, so for this Christmas scene, um, if the first part is the sky, I really like the ombre look. So I'm just gonna dip I'm going to use a couple of different shades of blue here and just mix and match. Okay, and I'm going to use the darker blue. I'm going to start with the darker blue uh, up top. And actually, it looks even cool for the first layer in the sky. Uh, if you add some black in, um, I think that looks really neat. Uh, I like the dark color up top because it's really nice to be able to come back in and add some stars and they show up really well on the dark. So I think using just different brushes up here and different brush strokes uh, like this gives you some really nice cloud cover. And just dabbing like that will give you a nice skyline. All right, going back in with some different uh, colors, some blue over the black, I think gives it dimension. And I think you'd be surprised how nice of a painting you can make if you just come in with layers um, and different colors and going back over top things with different colors, different textures, it really gives the painting dimension. Okay, this is coming from a very uh, non-painter, non <laughs> non-artist. Um, let's get some 
gray in there. And again, just kind of drag down, right, to hew it, blend. We're just gonna do the sky for now. We'll come back in with some snowflakes maybe and um, some stars. I think like if you're doing mixed media and not just using paint, that could be so cool. Um, using just some um, like snowflakes, uh, some pigment powders to give like some shimmery effect, uh, stickles. Today, I think I'm just going to be using paint, but using all those things would, I think, really give it something special. And you can paint today and go back and add stuff later, whatever you want to do. Okay, so I'm going back in with the gray and just adding some clouds. Okay, and this will kind of tie each of the layers of colors together. Remember, it's wintry, it's cloudy. Okay. Don't forget your paper towels. So I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope your projects are coming along nicely. I think things like this just give a nice reprieve. Sometimes we end up with so many different things on our desk that it becomes overwhelming. And if you just go back to the basics sometimes, I think you'd be surprised what you can create without a whole lot of hoopla. Okay, now that I have wet on my brush, I am going to, I think I'm happy with that cloud cover. Okay, I'm just going to kind of drag this down a little bit and make a lighter layer. So I want some really light blue drug all the way down here. And this is what we're gonna paint our houses against. Don't be afraid to mix to get the shade you want, especially when you're doing the ombre stuff. Just taking the same blue and then adding a little bit more white every time you get a little bit further down will really give you that nice ombre um, skyline look you're going for. And you do want to pull down, um, drag it down, but you also you don't want to lose the texture of the sky. So we're going to kind of go back to that blotty look. if a little white sticks through too. It's not all going to be uniform and that's what makes it a skyline, right? Make sure it's light down here um, because this is we're going we're going to be drawing our cottages and you're going to be limited to only dark colors if this is too dark 
uh, or else you'll have color clearly showing through the cottage. Now let's add some more low-lying clouds. You have some wispy clouds and then some thicker clouds, whatever you prefer. Okay. Perfect. I like that really easy right okay so now let's get drawing our cottages so I think we're gonna draw the structure of the cottages first and then we'll get back into decorating them so I ran out of space on my palette so don't let that stop you. Here's cardboard of a box that I just got in the mail. Done. All right, so let's get some pink. Oh, I have not used this one before. Okay. I love this purple. These are all just acrylic paints I got that I, like I said, I have just accumulated. I couldn't even tell you where I got these because I've just had them for so long. Because painting has always kind of terrified me. Somewhere along the way though, I got some really pretty colors. Some purple. All right. I love these. Oh, and this burgundy. Let's get some burgundy on here doesn't take much so just use sparing drops I also these are actually really nice paints um, so after this I think we're gonna have to break out the uh, the, the jelly plate <laughs> okay so let's get working on our cottages so I think I'm gonna start with a pretty pink cottage so I think what makes this so cool and unique is when you have different architectural designs it kind of gives that like row home look so let's start the here I'm gonna make your square base okay and we're gonna give all these like a different roof and window style and that's what's going to make them unique. So once you've drawn your the outline, um, we're just going to come in with thicker brush here. So we're not here all day on the same cottage. Um, and don't freak out if you mess up there's always a solution and you can always paint over it that's what I didn't realize like guess I never thought of it like it's okay you can make a mistake and come back in 15 minutes and paint over it and all is not lost okay so once this dries, we're going to come back in and paint another layer 
um, because obviously you can still see bl uh, plenty of blue sticking through, showing through. So let's do just your regular triangle roof. See if you can draw a triangle, you can paint. See? See how easy that was? So different ways to decorate this. You can come in, you can Ooh. I'm gonna I love the snow capped roof look, so we'll definitely do that to all these, but you can paint the roof a different color and paint some designs in there. You can slant the roof, you can make it crazy, uh, you can make an overhang like this, um, you can dangle lights off, you can make shingles, um, anything you want to customize them. I think I'm going to make this pink, but we'll find a way to decorate the roof um, and customize it. It's like a Barbie dream house, isn't it? Okay, clearly we still have some blue showing through, that's okay. Once it dries, we're gonna come back in and do a second layer. Okay. This is like really relaxing, guys. If you have not done this, you just need to try it. Okay. So, now let's make some windows. So I'm going to go with the black. Be careful. Uh, you only want a little bit on your brush especially when you're drawing fine things. Here's the other thing I wanted to mention is I got these out of a nail manicure kit. They're not brushes, they have the fine tip. This is perfect for like stars, um, for uh, making dots for like the lights and ornaments and things. Um, so I really like this and you can actually write really well with these. Um, get yourself one. Okay. So we're just going to make some windows. So feel free to customize these however you like. I love the little details. You can make balconies, um, whatever. And since it's a Barbie dream house, I think we're going to make some nice French doors. Alright, I'm not happy with that. You guys can see I screwed up the side. It's all blurry. I'm just going to try and even this out. So I'm going to go back in with the pink and just 
go over that black line that's smudged. There we go. Better. Okay, when this dries, these windows, I'm gonna come back in with gold. I think it it makes it look like there's light coming through the windows. I love that. Um, let's make a light strand. Actually, I'm gonna finish, no. Well, yeah, I'm gonna finish these windows. gonna make a nice little light strand. I want to do something to distinguish the roof though. Um, I'm gonna just give it like a frame. Okay. Alright, now let's give it a light strand. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think a really pretty Christmas wreath would look really good here. So I'm going to go back in with my green. I'm going to draw a circle Okay But we don't want it to look so one-dimensional So I'm going to take um, a fan brush, or I don't know if it's a fan brush, it's not quite a fan brush, but a wider brush, okay, and dab it in the green. And just give some branches. Okay. So it doesn't look so one dimensional. Okay, and now we're going to make a bow for it. So I'm going to go in the red and just make two dots. Okay. Just to simulate a bow. And that's where these with this really little fine point tip comes in handy. Nice. All right. We can definitely add more to it. Um, but I think I want to leave that as is. You'll find like this is not quite I like to keep the edges of the cottages crisp so that um, you can distinguish each little cottage next to each other.
I might have to clean it up a little bit. That's okay. So it's not as crisp as I would want. Um, so I'm going to pick a darker colored cottage and just we'll kind of be able to go over that blurry area. And it shouldn't show through too much. So let's actually come in with this burgundy. And again, I think the finer tip brushes are best for creating the frame. We're gonna make this one a little bit taller. When you're creating the frame for something, don't press down too hard. Otherwise it'll give that wide appearance. You want a delineated line for the frame. Okay, let's create um, a roof that gives us some character and opposes this plain, the triangle framed roof. So I'm just going to work in the little detailed areas here and then we'll switch to the larger bristled brush to finish it off. Let's delineate the bottom of the roof here. Um, and why don't we make this balcony? It's a rooftop balcony. Alright. Make a square or a circle window. And we'll make, um, we'll just make a rectangle door here. The little people. Okay. 
Okay. I think I'm gonna do something to dress up that balcony. I think we'll make we'll make some add some garland. Uh, after this black paint dries, I just don't want to mix the green and the black together. Um, but yeah, I like that. And we'll add some extra special touches uh, when we're done creating the frames of the houses. It's just, it's, it's better if you let the frame dry so you're not mingling the colors in. Alright, let's get, let's see, we're kind of going for funky colored cottages. So why don't we do some orange next? Um, that's a little bright orange for my taste though. I'm going to mix this orange down with some white. Make it a little less <laughs> retro. Um, hippie orange. Something a little bit more neutral. so pretty bright but oh well okay so let's do hmm. let's do like a double decker I think we'll give this one a nice chimney. So let's do the first floor, the first story first. Okay. I don't know. I want to obviously make this two stories. I'm trying to think of a way to like make it so that it's clearly two stories without using different colors. I think we'll if we make a staircase. A door here. There's, we could do something really cool to like decorate the stairs here. It's kind of what I was thinking. If we make like a hand railing, we can decorate it with a garland and some lights. All right, we need to make sure this is clearly a door. So.
Make that clearly a door handle. Um, let's make our staircase like this. We want to make sure we give ourselves enough room to decorate it. Clearly looks like a staircase, right? Okay. Alright. I'm going to put a black line here to delineate the story. Okay, now we're going to finish with the second story. And I think the other thing that would help us delineate it is if we use um, different windows, like different style windows. Got some intermingling of the colors there. Oopsie daisy. Not to worry, we'll just paint over it. Okay, so let's go in and make some windows. Okay, and I think some shingles too might help like add to the structure of the house. I think with these, no detail is too small because it really adds to the charm of these little cottages. Alright. And don't worry, we will be dressing them up soon. Alright. So, let's get some green in here. I 
Let's give it gray this green with a funky shaped roof. What this kind of reminds me of is when I visited Carousel and they have those beautiful brightly colored houses that are row homes and they look so distinguished just lined up against each other. Kind of reminds me of it. I love that place. The beaches were so nice. Um, I didn't have my dive certificate when I went uh, but now that I do and I absolutely love scuba diving. Uh, I think I have to go back. Even if you don't dive, if you just want to snorkel, the visibility of the beaches is incredible. You don't even have to take a long boat ride out. You can go to just about any beach there and get incredible visibility and sea life, uh, like right from the shore. Uh, I would definitely add to your bucket list if you haven't been. All right. So let's psh, 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 psh. let's give this green one a cute little planter box. I'm gonna draw it kind of like I did the balcony, just a little arc under. Okay. I'm gonna draw a door. Just a little, happy little door. Okay. The only problem is it's green, so obviously we can't have green stems. So I think we're gonna break the rules and um, make flowers with blue stems. Why blue, not brown? I don't know. I don't have brown out in front of me right now. We're just going to go for it. All right, we're going to Right. I'm going to make our leaves. Alright, I like the thin little metal tip for this specifically. Alright, give yourself, put a big dollop on there and just dab. And these are going to be the petals of the flowers. But I like these little add-ons because they are perfect to decorate. You can add lights to them, add garland. Um, whatever you want. Okay, let's go for a red cottage. All right. Um, let's do a store. And we're going to clearly make it look like a store. It 
it's going to be the biggest building on the block. Okay, so I think one of the best ways to make something, make one of these buildings look like a store is to give it that overhang, like roof. And we'll add some other nice little touches to make it look like it's clearly a store. Alright, so first we're gonna draw we're gonna draw the doors and make them big doors. And they're going to be double doors, like a store would have. And we're going to put a little sign here that says open. Mm, well, I don't know if that's wide enough to write open now. It's going to make it look like a sign. And then we'll put above it open. Mm, I don't like that. Okay. Well, like I said, it is paint, so we are going to dab that and away with you.
away with you Away with you We'll find something else to make it look like the store. I just didn't leave myself enough room to write, um, make a sign. And actually, we can make this the door and have this be a sign above the doors. I like that. And that'll give us plenty of writing room. Okay, now. Let's give ourselves a nice window. Okay. I will show you what I like to do with the windows. Um, after that finish dry, uh, finish, finishes drying. Um, now that these look pretty dry, let's go back and add some decorations to the cottages. Okay. So get a really thin tipped brush and let's go back in and here's our balcony. I think I want to add garland to that. Let's add a light strand to this cottage and we'll use the window to secure our light strand. Okay. And I'm gonna put a light strand too along the store that we just drew. Painted rather, I guess I should say. Okay. I think this thin little metal tip works the best for um, the decorations, but you can use this or a fine tip brush, whatever you would prefer. So you just want maybe like three or four colors and just go along the light strand and add some bumps. I think the orange I'm going to do like multicolored um, for the red store. I think blue and silver would look really nice. And it doesn't have to be exact like every other. Alright. I love that. Alright, so for this one, let's do... We have blue. Let's add in some pink. Um, let's do some burgundy. Why not, right? Now, 
I think this roof here would look amazing with a strand of lights. So I'm going to add a strand and we're going to do just gold lights. I think the pink and the gold will look amazing. Um, for the lighter colors, you may have to go over it a couple of times for it to show up well. Um, the other thing I think would make really great lights is if you have some stickles lying around or some liquid pearls. And they would give some added texture. But I said I was only going to use paint, so I'm only going to use my paint today. I'd say it's nice. It's I'm not really being distracted by anything else. When you know you don't have to go digging for things, you can only use what you have on your desk. I think it makes it more relaxing. And I think it forces you to be a little bit more creative. All right. Okay. Um, I want to add some more detail to that planter box. There we go. Alright. Um, I'm going to add a couple of details to the roof of the store. Makes it look more industrial. <laughs> kind of looks a little bit like a barn, but you know, it's okay. So now I want to show you what I do with the windows to give them some extra life. So I have some gold here. Okay, same as what I use to decorate the ornaments. Um, take a thin brush and you want to just, and you may have to water it down a little bit, but just stay within the confines of the window and add a little gold luster. And I think it just makes it look illuminated and makes the windows look a little bit more convincing. Because it looks like there's a light shining through. Same here, same with the French door. And with these acrylic paints, like less is more. Um, you don't need a whole lot. I think for, I mean, I guess you could do this with watercolors, 
but for um, painting when you're adding such small detail, I think it might be a little bit more difficult to do with, with uh, watercolors. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, maybe it's my lack of skill. Alright, we're just going to finish up the window here. Alright. Okay, so let's see what other extra touches we can make to really give these cottages and little shops some charm. Alright, first of all, I really like the snow cap look. So take one of your fine tipped brushes, get out the white, and just layer on some snow where it would naturally accumulate. Okay, and make sure to dab the brush to give it that actual texture of snow. Okay, and don't add it to all the surfaces or it doesn't really look snow-capped. Um, maybe drag it down to the roof. Like it would probably normally accumulate in the crevices here. I think if you make it a little bit thicker in some places, it looks more like actual snow. Um, it gives it some texture, like it kind of jumps off the page. I think like some mixed media, like a pigment powder, um, would give it a, like a really nice, I have this pigment powder that would give it like a really nice shimmery look. I may go back in after and add that. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things, about like Mod Podge and baking soda, something like that, um, to give it a little extra texture. I haven't tried that, just that kind of just came to mind. That might look really cool. This is like so relaxing guys. I hope you are crafting along with me. I feel like this is what everyone needs to do after a long stressful day. I think the world would be like a happier place. We just came home and played with our papers and paint sets. <laughs> okay, I feel like that's pretty good snow capped roofing. I want to add, let's add a little snow to the doors here, um, along the window sills, amongst the flower bed. Though that could be sad because then all the flowers are like apt to die soon, but <laughs> we won't think about that too hard. Alright, on the door. Window sill. Okay. Oh, I love that. Maybe a little bit along the balcony.
and along little windows here. Alright, maybe I'm going overboard, but yeah, I'm probably going overboard. Um, I really like that. Okay. Alright. Very snow capped looking. Okay. I wanted to add a sign to this little cottage um, store. Um, trying to think of a good color. I just wanted to put like open or something like that. Um, show up. I don't want to use white because that's what the snow, the color of the snow up top. I'm going to just use some more gold. Yeah, if you want to write these metal tipped um, little things that are not actual paintbrushes, they're um, manicure styling things. I think that's like the way to go. Nice. Okay. Why don't we add? Why don't I make like a little tree here too? Or put a little, let's put a little tree in the window there. Um, oops. Yeah. Doesn't have to be the full shape of a tree. We're just gonna make like a tree topper. So that kind of just looks like a blob. I should have used a smaller paintbrush. What you can do again, um, I think you can really make anything look good if you add a couple of layers and different textures and use some definition. So I'm just gonna mix. I'm mixing some green and some black over here, and I'm just gonna do this again. Like do some dabbing to create the look of more, um, more brush. Try and make this look a little bit more like a tree. Because right now I feel like it's just one big blob. I'm still not thrilled with that, but that will do. I think let's put a star up top and people will clearly be able to. Well, I can't use gold. <laughs> um, uh, let's make some red ornaments. People can clearly see that it's a tree. Um... Why don't we make a blue, nice pretty blue star? Why blue? I don't know. Because gold is taken. Okay. <gasps> Alright, not my finest work, but you can clearly see it's a tree in the window. Um, or the top part of a tree. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, let's add some garland up the staircase. 
going to make some loops. Maybe we'll do like holly and berries. That reminds me, let's add some mistletoe to the door. That would be darling. So these are the nice special little touches you can add that make this so cute and like personalized. All right, I need a door big enough. Let's see, can't use the green one. Let's do this one. All right, let's make two little leaves. Okay, and a nice little berry in between. There we go. Let's add a little more green. It's clearly like mistletoe on the door. Oh, I love it. All right, so we added some mistletoe, a tree, some garland. Some holly berries, a wreath. Um, you could add like a bench, a mailbox. Maybe we'll just add another like little tree down here. Let's add a gold star. Okay. And let's add some ornaments. Let's try some blue ornaments. Okay guys, sorry about that. I had a camera glitch. So I added the ornaments and the finishing touches and I'm thrilled with how this came out. So I hope this project inspired you to create some Christmas ephemera and to tackle some projects you think you're not ready to ready to take on maybe uh, or that you've been putting off um, so I really enjoyed this crafting session um, we're gonna make a lot more Christmas embellishments for our journals uh, in the upcoming videos and so if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe my videos come out Mondays and Fridays can't wait to see you the next time